Hey everyone, so today we are going to see that Laplace inverse is linear in nature. That means if you have Laplace inverse of alpha f of s plus beta g of s, then it behaves nicely. That means this Laplace inverse go inside and this scalars alpha and beta comes outside. Okay, that's the first thing we are going to see. And then we are going to see that Laplace inverse doesn't behave well with the product. The same as Laplace. Laplace also doesn't behave well with the products. Doesn't behave well means Laplace inverse of product is not equal to the product of Laplace inverses. Okay, so that's what the agenda for today's session is. So first we will prove the linearity and then I will give you the counter example. Okay, so what do we have? We have that if you have a function f of t whose Laplace is what f of s that means that means and in other way if I want to write Laplace inverse of f of s is f of t. This is what I have and Laplace of say g of t is g of s and Laplace inverse of g of s is g of t. So these are the two things we are having. What I want to prove? We want to prove that Laplace inverse of alpha times f of s plus beta times g of s where alpha and beta are nothing but scalars then your alpha comes outside it is laplace inverse of f of s plus beta also comes out and laplace inverse go inside this is what i want to prove okay so what we do is we will apply laplace to this let us try to apply laplace to this thing and let us see what do we get okay and now when we apply laplace to this we are going to use that laplace is linear in nature okay so let us apply laplace to this so laplace of alpha into laplace inverse of f of s plus beta into laplace inverse of g of s so what do we get is alpha into laplace of this quantity plus beta into Laplace of this quantity. We have used the fact that Laplace is linear. But what is this? This is alpha. What is Laplace inverse of f of s? It is f of t. What is Laplace of f of t? It is again f of s. Or you can say this goes away. Plus beta. What is Laplace inverse of g of s? It is g of t. You again apply Laplace. It is g of s. And now you take this Laplace over here. So Laplace of this quantity is this. So what is Laplace inverse of this? So therefore Laplace inverse of alpha f plus beta g is nothing but this quantity. Right? So if I call this as h of h of s, then Laplace of this is this. So Laplace inverse of this is h of s. So this is alpha Laplace inverse of f of s plus beta laplace inverse of g of s and that's what we proved over here that laplace inverse is linear in nature okay now what was the next thing with the product does laplace behave good with the product answer is no what about laplace inverse answer is still no okay so if you take f of s as 1 by s and g of s as again 1 by s then what is f of s into g of s? It is 1 by s square. So now what is Laplace inverse of f of s into g of s? It is Laplace inverse of 1 upon s square. And we know that Laplace of t is 1 upon s square. What is Laplace inverse of f of s into Laplace inverse of g of s? What is Laplace inverse of 1 upon s? 1. What is Laplace inverse of g upon s? 1. So 1 into 1 is nothing but 1. And 1 is not equal to t. This is a constant function. This is a linear function. So these two are not same. So Laplace inverse doesn't behave well with the product. But it behaves well with the vector addition. And it behaves well with the scalar multiplication. And that's why when we try to solve problems in Laplaces, when we take the inverse, we can directly take the inverses inside. So I hope the proof is clear. If you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you.